Let me see. I've got all the time. There is no time, my dear. It's always now. At every precise moment. Oh, well, yes, if you put it that way, of course. You are consciously God. Wait a moment, consciously, not necessarily, because that would spoil the fun. If you press button surprise, you press the button so that you forget who you are. Right, so that you don't always know all the answers to a given problem. Yes, that's perfectly true. This is called, in the Bible, kenosis. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought not equality with God a thing to be grasped, but humbled himself and made himself of no reputation and was found in fashion as a man and became obedient to death. And so you get from this the kenotic theory of creation held by some of the Greek fathers, that the creation of the universe is the self-emptying or self-forgetting of the Godhead. Because the universe is fundamentally a system which creeps up on itself and then says, boo! <laughs> and then it laughs at itself for jumping. And you see, every time it does it, it forgets that it did it before. <laughs> so it never becomes a bore. <laughs> yes, the lady in red. Can you make yourself into a point of consciousness and travel around the cosmos? Yes, but it isn't necessary to travel. One is already there. In other words, I'm using your eyes where you are, like you're using mine. Just in the same way, my head is not my feet, it uses my feet. The head is very different from the feet. You couldn't possibly say the head and the feet are the same, but they are one organism. Yes. Would you say we're going around in circles trying to eliminate evil? Because we never will. A, there might not be any evil. We yes. Never eliminate it, so we're just playing games. We are going round in circles. But you see, going round in circles, as you may have observed by looking at the sky, is what the universe is doing. <laughs> as long as we recognize we're going around, we're all right. Yes, that's the thing. It's a dance. And when you dance, you don't dance to get somewhere. But one of the biggest problems in life is being forced to earn a living at something which is not what I would rather be doing. There is the answer to move somewhere and live on less money and do the thing that I would like to do, or must I resign myself to do the thing that gets me the bread and that in my spare time somehow try to make up? Well, there are two sort of answers, one of which you've already indicated, which is to do with less and do what you want. What is the alternative to clearing out of the job you're doing? Well, there are ways of making almost any activity into a dance. Uh, supposing you had to drive a bus in New York, you must not take seriously anything about it. It doesn't matter a damn if you don't get there on time, but it would be fun to go as fast as is consistent with safety. And therefore, you swing that bus, and you, you, you play things with the horn, you take the whole thing lightly, as if uh, it is not serious. And because, and this is the nature, say, in ritual, when you have a procession. Now, people who don't understand religion don't know how to make the right kind of processions. There are those who go a military march, and they don't understand it because their objective is to get there. There are those who dawdle like ducks, and uh, they don't understand because they are trying to be dignified. On the other hand, there are those who walk as if they had already arrived. And this is the way kings walk, because a king is the center and he is always where it's at. Where it's at is where the king is by definition. <laughs> so, if you work in this way, anything monotonous can be treated in the same way. God is God omniscient? Well, it depends what you mean by the word. Uh, a lot of people think that omniscience is like uh, knowing everything that's in the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> That's not omniscience, that's intellectual elephantiasis. <laughs> the thing is this. What we ordinarily call knowledge is the translation of life into words. And that is a very cumbersome process because if we had to translate the process into words every time we took a breath, we'd never get around to it. 
that it takes so long to describe and think through the whole physiology of breath. Therefore, we do it without thinking about it. And I find that I'm shining the stars in just the same way. I mean, if you want it in words, it's going to take us a long time to get through them because words are strung out in a line. Eternally, we are, and we are all gods. How come I find the difficulty to find the increase of tranquility within myself? If you are God, how do you find such difficulty in finding peace and tranquility in yourself? That's because you're looking for it away from the place in which you are. You are seeking it apart from the experience which you have at this moment. But the trouble with that is that it splits you in two pieces. And once you're split in two pieces, you're lost. Because you've made a difference between the experience you are now having on the one hand and yourself who is having it on the other. And you wish you could get away from that experience. Now the truth of the matter is you can't because you are what you experience. You think you want something different from what you have. But if you do think that, you've got to ask yourself the question, what it is that you really want? This is the most fundamentally important question. And you will find if you go into it very, very deeply, that you have it. God, if this place caught on fire, I would find myself so scared, if I am God and scared, what do I do about that? Well, one of the ways of not being bored is to scare yourself. We go to the movies just to be scared. But indeed, before we go and say, well, this isn't really going to happen, it's only a play or a movie, if... <coughs> You see, after all, the task of the actor on the stage is to come on so well that the audience thinks it's real. So that he has them crying, so that he has them shaking with fear, so that he has them sitting on the edges of their chairs. Well, that's just one ordinary Joe Doak's actor, but supposing the actor of the play is the real big actor. Wow, that play would seem real. And so that's what happens when the house cat is on fire. What is sleep? The seventh day. <laughs> when you sleep. <laughs> what is my motivation for going on the stage? That is like asking, why is there a universe? Why am I here? And I answer that question. Then somebody says, well, why that? And then somebody says, well, why that? Why that? Why that? And you get back and back and back, and eventually you get tired of answering. But what happens, you see, when we trace the causation of things into the past, it all begins to fade out in silence and no answer. Why? Because it didn't begin there. The universe begins now. It didn't begin in the past. And the past trails back from now like the wake of a ship. Yes, life is like one great koan. No, death is not the solution. It has no solution. Otherwise, uh, it wouldn't happen. What is not a component of Western common sense is that nothing is something. We treat nothingness as if it were, it wasn't really important at all. And yet, when we look out at the night and we see all these stars in space, try and imagine what the heavens would look like if there weren't any space then obviously there wouldn't be any stars. I mean, you could think that they would all be jammed together in a lump. There are various objections to that. How would you see the edge of the lump without space around it? Furthermore, we know uh, when we investigate the constitution of matter physically, that at the atomic level, there's more space in something than there is anything else. If space is essential to solid, it's perfectly obvious then that nothing is essential to something. If you can't have something without nothing, it means nothing is pretty powerful stuff. <laughs> because something comes out of it. Bloop, like that. Now you would say, well, if uh, something comes out of nothing, there must be some kind of mystery inside nothing. It must have a, a secret structure of some kind. How could this world generate? Could it just be out of free-floating hydrogen? No, it is a much simpler idea than that. It comes out of real solid nothing. Yeah. <laughs>